Today we're going to do some weaving in the round. It's a very accessible way to start weaving as you don't need any fancy equipment. I've got a metal ring with a diameter of 25 centimeter and I need some warp string and I'll be using some yarn and that's it. It's as simple as that. So let's get started. I'll show you how to do the entire thing. I will start by wrapping the ring with this 5mm cotton string. I will knot it to the end just with a simple knot. And then because this cone is quite big and I need to go around the ring, I will take about 15 times the diameter of this ring and cut it off just to make it easier for myself. Now I take my little bundle and just wrap it around the ring and making sure that it's all very tight and close together. It's very easy, just hold the wrap with your left hand and then wrap it around with your right hand or vice versa, making sure to keep it all very tight. Continue all the way to the end and then cut off the excess string and then you can knot it together. I'm making two knots first with the left string on its own and then I'm knotting both tails together. Make sure those knots are not too bulky. So there you have it. This top part can be used to hang your piece when you're done. and. It all looks good. So now let's start warping it. I have this uh, cotton string. It's one millimeter and it's really strong and it doesn't stretch, which is important. First, knot one end to the ring. Make sure it's tight. And then take it across and be sure to be exactly in the middle and then move on to the other side. So take your cone or your bundle, take it through the ring and to the opposite side. I'm opting to take about one centimeter between each warp, but this is something you can choose. One centimeter is actually quite small. So take it to the other side again, opposite side, one centimeter take the cone through the ring to the opposite side and it's very important to keep tension on this string at all times so this takes some practice maybe take it to the opposite side one centimeter and just continue all the way around at the end my cone is getting too big to go in between the warp strings so I'm taking a decent amount to make sure I have enough cut it off and then continue to secure the warp string I'm going to go around the middle to secure all those strings together a few times. So as you can see, I'm just randomly going down and up and then pulling all the strings together in the middle. And finally, I will tie it up with a knot. Make sure to keep on the tension. And there you have it, ready to go on to the good part. So I've made a really warm palette with some different kinds of fibers. So some cotton string uh, to make lovely texture, just some white wool from We Are Knitters. 
this is beautiful guts wool core spun wool yarn uh, this is the yarn that I spun myself which is not great quality in the way that I spun it but I think I'll manage to make it work some wool roving and some colors here and then a pop of color here as well and I think all together it's going to be gorgeous so I've got a few tools, a long a weaving needle, a tapestry needle, which has a hooked tip, which is very helpful. And I've got my yarn snip. I would like to take a moment to talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring another video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on all kinds of subjects, creative subjects like graphic design, photography, videography, painting, you name it, you can find it on Skillshare. So I've been dipping my toes in gouache lately. I got all the supplies I needed and I took out my sketchbook and I've been following some classes. I'm now following a class by Kate Cook which is called Adventures in Gouache Painting and Pattern Making Techniques. It really opened my eyes to how simple things can be and look really pretty. So if you're interested in learning a new skill today, head down to the description box. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a free month on Skillshare. So now let's move on with weaving. I will start by covering this middle area. So I'm taking a chunky yarn. Simply knot the chunky yarn to one of the warp strings. This knot will be a lovely texturized addition. And then I will go over and under some of the strings. With these chunky yarns, I like to weave very loosely and just go by feeling and what I see in covering up some areas. I've made two other videos about weaving and these are on a frame loom and in these videos I go in detail about the techniques you can use to fill up an area like this. With round weaving the techniques are not very different so if you want to have in detailed explanation on how to weave I advise you to watch those videos, they are very helpful. I'm trying to cover up the middle part here, so I've made a little loop and I'm just going around it, making chunky bits of weaving, which will give it that gorgeous texture we are after. Sailors passing on the street, are you ready for peace? Mm -hmm. Ships are filling up fast, are you ready for ease? Mm -hmm. Forget bad memories and Leave those hurt and knees behind The middle part of a round weaving gets really tight. The warp strings are very close together. So what I'm doing here is going under and over two warp strings at a time. This creates some extra room, it's easier and it looks better. This fine yarn also helps to lock in the chunky yarn. I knot the tail to the warp string and then continue with a different color. I'm now going for an area with some chunkier white yarn and I'm just going to fill up this entire weaving with patches of thinner and thicker yarns and also roving. Birds are filling up the sky, are you willing to try? Sing along as they hum and be fulfilled 
Many more will come, many more under the sun. Pack your finest suit. We will keep it steady. We will be the confetti. If we fail, we just reboot. Let's start adding some color. So I've got this piece of roving, which is too chunky for the size weaving we have. So I'm going to split off a smaller piece. Just pull it apart, really easy. And now I'm going to use a technique that I also use to make the clouds in the other video that I've just shown you. The warp strings are coming together in sets of two, so you can squeeze a bit of roving in between those two and this way the roving immediately gets grabbed by it because they are tied together. And then we're going to make these cute little chunks and I'm going to do that by going in different directions and going in between those sets of warp strings each time. Mm. This is one of my favorite materials to work with, this chunky cotton string. By just making knots I create this gorgeous texture and it contrasts nicely with the areas with finer yarns. Because it is so chunky I'm going under and over two warp strings at a time. And I also like to make knots and cut it off to create this fun look. So the technique is basically making knots and going under and over warp strings to make sure it's attached to the weaving. So a while back I spun my own yarn with a drop spindle. It's really not that well made because it's the first time I did it but I still love the look of it and the colors. So I think I can make it work. It's really quite fragile so I have to be very careful moving it up and down and I'm doing that by splitting the warp strings with my fingers. And I'm just doing a plain weave here, so going up and down in between two warp threads at a time to make it very easy on this yarn. And it's got this chunkiness and lovely swirls on its own, so it's it doesn't take too much to look good. So I've continued and added some more colors, this lovely wine color and also some red. And I'm taking a fine yarn again and going in the middle here. It's a little bit tight. I should have done this before I did the roving part on the right, I think. But still, it's manageable. Going under and over two strings at a time and pulling it just bit by bit and as you can see I also like to use my tapestry needle as my comb which is very easy to do. You don't really need any fancy materials for this type of weaving which is great. 
So when you're done with an area, you can weave it in at the back like this. And if you do this for every area as you go, then at the end you hardly have to do anything to finish this type of weaving. I'm absolutely in love with this color combination, by the way. So this is where I'm at right now. And at first I thought I was going to do just the ombre in the middle and then leave some negative space around it, but I feel that it would look unfinished. So I started filling up this negative space. So I added some more of this right here, some of this right here, and I'm just going to fill it up completely and probably add some of the darker blue uh, also on the other side to balance it out. And I'm really loving the result guys it's super texturized and these colors are really yummy so you've seen all the techniques i've used so i'm just going to finish it up and you'll see the result right now Appalachian sunrise meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in Golden, golden. I'll follow only golden, golden Golden, golden things So I hope you had fun. If you want to get started with a round weaving, then you can find a kit in my shop. So head down to the description box where you can find uh, the link to Skillshare and also to my kit. Bye guys.